I don't remember when the first time I saw her was. I had already been volunteering at the shelter for a few years when I really noticed her. And she's not the first. It's happened with other dogs too. Suddenly you ask, hey, who's that? And you get a reply like, oh, he, she has been here for years. <laughs> Those discreet, quiet, average looking dogs get overlooked, even by me. <laughs> And the thing with her is that I didn't even ask about her because I noticed her on my own. One of my favorite dogs, Oscar, had been moved and when he started sharing a kennel with her, that's when she became visible to me. That was years ago. I remember a couple of things I was told that first time I really saw her. I remember that she was one of the cleanest dogs in the shelter always waiting to be let out to pee and poo. I remember I was told she was the quietest, most polite dog, but that she would defend her best friend Oscar, who was blind, whenever he was bullied. I don't remember when or where she was found and if she suffered from any diseases. I definitely do remember thinking that if I hadn't noticed her so far, the chances of her being noticed by someone else and adopted were slim. <laughs> Very very slim. I'm not sure what exactly happened after that. So many dogs come and go and keeping up with all those stories is not easy. And a discreet dog like her usually gets a discreet promotion. Not intentionally, but the words you put together to present her to people kind of don't draw that much attention. It all sounds like a word salad sometimes. Hey, there's Tetris. She's more or less perfect dog, average, looking quiet. She's nice, you know, she's there's nothing that special about her, I guess. If you want a discreet presence around the house, well, there you go. <laughs> that's not what we would write about her, but I'm pretty sure that's what it sounded like. For a while, I thought maybe Oscar and her could be adopted together, so I promoted them as a couple. <laughs> it didn't work. A couple of years ago, I did a Christmas video. There's this place near the shelter. It looks like an abandoned construction site. Someone had left an old couch there, some roof tiles and all sorts of junk. I chose her to be one of the dogs that would participate. Oscar as well. And she sat there. She looked cute on the couch. There was this feeling of decadence around the entire video. There was a point anyway. You know, forgotten dogs, forgotten stuff, out of sight, out of mind. Anyway, when one of the volunteers saw that Christmas video, she was silent for a while and then she said, most of them won't be around next Christmas. What do you mean? I screamed. Shut up, don't say that. And then she pointed out that most of those dogs were old. I hadn't realized she was old. You know, it's difficult with dogs like her who are quiet to begin with. You don't realize their age because not much changes in their behavior. Besides, having a dog around for so long makes you see it as a landmark of some sort, as if it's always going to be there, no matter what, part of the geography of the shelter. There are some dogs in every shelter that have this cloud over their heads, a cloud that basically means they'll be there forever. The volunteers have come to terms with that fact. And for some dogs, it's easy. Some are too sick, some are too old, some are too problematic, and some are just... Some are just the type of dog that even though there's nothing wrong with them, really, that cloud follows them for some reason. And she was one of them. Until on top of that, she also grew old. <laughs> yes, her appearance was also a huge issue, but I'm not going to focus on that now. But you can comment all you like how beautiful she is and how cute, but your comments won't change the fact that mixed breed, average looking black dogs do not get adopted that easily. And that's a fact. Anyway, her mate Oscar got adopted. Not that she got depressed or anything, she's not that type of dog. But I did. <laughs> I felt like I had failed her. The seasons came and went, her age started showing. 
and one day I posted her together with more dogs from the list above, all the ones labeled not adoptable, as a last resort. And it worked! She found home that day from that post, and in case I forget, I want to say it now, and that is a message to all the rescuers out there, never stop trying, because you never know. Especially when you've lost all hope, that's the right time to try even harder. Before she went home, I fostered her. Not for any specific reason. We knew the family and we trusted them completely. The year before, they had adopted another non-adoptable dog. You can click that bubble on the top right if you want to see that story. I decided to foster Tetris because I simply wanted to. She rode my car that day as if she knew where she was going. She found the bed I had prepared for her as if she had slept on it before. She walked around the neighborhood with me as if she always did. And from day one, it was as if she always lived here with me, my dogs and my cats. In one of the many posts about her the last years, there was one that said that Tetris is wise. I wasn't sure when I wrote it. It was just a feeling, but... There she was, in my home, proving me right. This dog had probably never lived in a home her entire life, and there she was, adjusting from day one, as if she had lived as a pet in a previous life and knew exactly what to do and what not to do. Tetris has been so far the easiest dog I have ever fostered. Between the holidays and me getting sick, I kept her for about a month. I even took her to my hometown with me for Christmas. She had never been there. Well, she had never been anywhere, but she behaved as if she had. As if she had always taken that three-hour car ride there. As if she knew the house. As if she knew the garden. Oh, that dog. Well, as I said, maybe she's lived as a dog before. I don't know. The thing I enjoyed most about fostering her was watching her sleep. I think she slept for the entire first two weeks she was with me. Sleep is one thing dogs miss when they live, either on the streets or in a shelter. With this deep sleep that really relaxes them is something they can't enjoy. And with the years, all that accumulates and the dogs get exhausted. Especially if they're elderly, like she is. So she slept and slept and slept and I watched her and watched her. I watched her sleep for hours. One night as she was sleeping on the bed next to me, I started crying. I cried for the years she had lost. Simple as that. The only consolation to it was the fact that I know dogs don't do that. They don't sit around dwelling about the past. They live the present. And that night, as I was watching her sound asleep on her bed, I realized that in her mind, it's where she had always slept. As if that sleep swallowed her entire past and made it disappear. Eventually, I took her home. And Tetris reacted as if she had always lived there, as if she had always known those people, that garden, that living room, those kids, those dogs. Okay, one of the dogs she had met years ago at the shelter, but I mean years ago. It was that day when I first saw the cheekiness in her, something I had never seen before, something I didn't know she had it in her. And that cheekiness developed and grew and Tetris showed some character. I mean, really showed some character. Two months after that, when I had her home with me for a couple of days again, she was the same dog I had given away for adoption, but she also wasn't. And there's no easy way to explain the minor details that develop in a dog's character after they've experienced the exclusivity of being a pet dog in a home. But those details are there, and they're adorable. She has adjusted to her new home as if she always lived there, as if she always belonged there. It's weird. It almost makes me believe that she did actually always belong there and nowhere else. I never understood her name, Tetris. I thought it was silly. It didn't match her character, it didn't match her appearance. It made everything difficult for me every time I was trying to put the right words together and write something that would make P 
people wanted to adopt her. God, that name really pissed me off for years. I said that to her adopter one day, mentioning that she can change the name if she wants to. And she replied, oh no, 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 it's a perfectly fitting name. Tetris, perfectly fitting. It's as if she was the missing piece. <laughs> I have nothing more to add to that. I mean, I don't know how long this dog is going to live, but it doesn't matter, you know? She finally landed where she belongs.